Okay, morning everyone. Uh, let's get started. So first of all, um, we have released uh, the the uh, uh, assignment for the final project report. I think it will be due on December December twenty. Guess as a will be four or five days after the final exam. So I think that will be uh, sufficient for everyone to submit your report. However, at this time we won't accept the um, extension request for the final project report. The reason is simple, because the admin level doesn't give you extension for posting of grade. So um, I will put it, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so so that's why I, I need to emphasize uh, it early. So don't request the uh, extension for that, because uh, we cannot, uh, we must we must post the grades uh, before the deadline given. Otherwise, you won't be able to uh, have your grade on your transcript. Okay, so uh, let us continue with back propagation. So uh, in the last lecture, uh, we talked about uh, the general training framework for neural networks. Right? It's actually the same um, framework as we use for other um, models, like stochastic green descent, right? So the framework is that we're gonna initialize our parameters, right? And for neural network, uh, usually, I mean, some random initialization because the loss of neural network uh, is usually highly nonlinear, non convex right? And then <clears throat> we're gonna go through um, a certain number of epochs. Uh, so big T here is uh, a hyperparameter. Inside each epoch, you first random shuffle the training set, then go through every training example, right? For every training example, you are gonna <clears throat> view this example as a entire data set. So we can compute the gradient of the loss on this particular training example, right? And then you just <clears throat> use this gradient as the stochastic gradient and then apply it uh, stochastic gradient descent, right? And after you uh, finish the every epoch, then, then you return your learned weight vector, which are actually the weights on the edges of all the neural networks, right? <clears throat> uh, on, the, on the whole neural network. That's your learn model parameters. So <clears throat> the, here, the K uh, bottleneck is about how to efficiently compute the gradient, even for one single example. The reason is because uh, the modern neural network is, um, is pretty common to be super large, right? 100 layers, 100 layers, 200 layers, with uh, millions or even billions of parameters. So um, that means even you going, uh, you're going through just one example, you have to compute a gradient vector of like 1 million or even 1 billion dimensional, right? So if you don't have an efficient computation technique, uh, um, then your algorithm won't be, uh, won't be feasible to handle even a reasonably a large amount of data, right? So that means the K is to, uh, uh, is the K to uh, fulfill efficient training is how to efficiently uh, fulfill the gradient calculation. Right? So um, <clears throat> then <clears throat> we mentioned that we're gonna leverage the chain rule. Right? Everyone is familiar with chain rule uh, when we uh, talk about, when we uh, study, start to learn a calculus one, right? So uh, we'll see that the efficient gradient calculation, which we call back propagation, uh, is just a, a smart leverage of the chain rule, right? So what is chain rule? Chain rule is the rule to compute the derivative for a composite function, right? So suppose um, z is a function of y, and y is a function of x. Okay. If we want to compute the derivative of z with respect to x, then we can first compute the partial derivative of z with respect to y, and then multiply with partial derivative of y with respect to x, right? So uh, if we have a, a more complicated composition relationship, uh, for example, if z, is a function of y1 and y2, and uh, both y1 and y2 are functions of x, right? If uh, we want to compute partial z or partial x, we're gonna <clears throat> compute partial z or partial y1 times partial y1 or partial x plus partial z or partial y2 times partial y2 or partial x, right? 
So that's uh, that's called a, a, a full derivative rule or chain rule, whatever. <coughs> Um, and this rule actually can be um, very concisely and intuitively represented by the so-called dependency graph. Right? So let us review this because this is very, very important for us to understand uh, back propagation uh, in neural networks. Right? <clears throat> so if we use uh, a variable to represent <clears throat> the output or input of all the functions we're interested in, right? So here, that will be z, y1, y2, and x, right? So we know z is a function of y1 and y2. So we can draw the edges from y1 to z and y2 to z, right? And then we know that y1 is a function of x. So we uh, draw an edge from x to y1, and y2 is a function of um, x. We draw an edge from x to uh, y2, right? So we can... Um, where we can represent the compositional relationship between those uh, variables uh, in terms of a graph, right? We call it dependency graph. Right? And to calculate the partial derivative of any variable um, on this graph with respect to another variable in this graph, uh, what is the general rule, right? First, along each edge, we can calculate and store the partial derivative of the destination node with respect to the partial derivative of the source node, right? So if we look at this edge, so this edge is um, starting from y1 and pointing to z. So on the edge, uh, we will keep, we will compute and keep partial z or partial y1, right? And similarly for the edge from y2 to z, we're gonna compute and keep partial z or partial y2. Similarly, from x to y1, we're going to have partial y1 or partial x. From x to y2, we'll have a partial y2 or partial x. So those are just like direct, immediate result of the partial derivative, right? From the targeting node or destination node um, with respect to the starting node or source node. Right? So now, if we want to query a partial derivative from z with respect to a partial derivative from x. So obviously there's no uh, immediate edge from x to z, right? Then how do we apply the chain rule? The chain rule tells us that you can look for all the paths starting from x ending at z. So how many paths do we have? Two paths, right? So one is x, y1, and z, right? The other is uh, uh, x, y2, z, right? So the uh, chain rule tells us, I mean, the graphical version of chain rule tells us if you want to compute the partial z or partial x, what you need to do is that you're going to multiply the partial derivatives along each path and add up those products across all the paths, all different paths. And that's it, right? So for the first pass, we're going to multiply the partial derivatives along that pass, which will be partial z or partial y1 times partial y1 or partial x, right? For the second path, uh, that is a pink one, right? Pink path, uh, their product will be partial z or partial y2 times partial y2 or partial x, right? We got two products, right? One product for uh, each. Uh, for each path, right? And then to get the uh, um, partial z or partial x, right? Our target du partial derivative, we just add up, we just add up uh, the two products, right? So any questions so far? Okay. So in general, like suppose uh, z is a function of uh, n variables, like y1 to yn. And each yn is a function of x. If you want to compute partial z or partial x, again, how many passes from x to z? n paths, right? So each path goes through, uh, goes through uh, one y variable, right? We got n paths, right? 
So you're going to multiply the partial derivative along each path, which will be partial z or partial yi times partial yi or partial x, right? Then you just add them together. Okay. So this is the chain rule of uh, uh, derivatives. Uh, over, I hope everyone feels com uh, comfortable about this. Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> now let us uh, uh, apply chain rule to um, do some calculation of the derivative with uh, uh, a given neural network. Okay. Um, we're going back to the exemplar neural network we uh, show we have shown before. Right? So <clears throat> from the forward pass, we know that we're going to compute the neuron in each layer until the upper layer, y. Right? So we're going to first compute z1 in terms x0, x1, x2. Right? Remember, associated with each edge will be a weight. Right? And z1, z2, and then given z0, z1, z2, we're going to compute the output neuron y, right? And then the output y will be used to compute the loss, right? So y star will be the ground truth. Right? We use the square loss. And remember, x0 and z0 is just a constant, a right? constant feature y. So now let us uh, consider um, how to compute the partial derivative of the loss right? with respect to uh, an arbitrary edge weight on this neural network. So that means we're going to compute the partial L or any edge weight between the upper layer and hidden layer, which are like W, I, G, O, right? Remember the target. Um, here's our notation standard, right? We got starting node, index, right? Destination node, index, and uh, target layer index, right? So that means, uh, so for this edge weight, we denote it by w zero one o because target uh, layer is output layer, right? And source node is z0, index by zero, right? And target node or destination node is uh, the output uh, node which we index by one. Right? So if you want to compute partial L over partial w i j o, that means all the edge weights here, and also partial L or partial w i g h, that means the edge weights um, between input layer and hidden layer, right? How can we do that? We're gonna apply the chain rule to compute the gradient uh, with respect to input neuron, and then with respect to each hidden neuron, and then with respect to uh, uh, every edge weight. Right? That's the basic idea. So let's uh, let us do uh, let us do that, right? So we can start with this, right? This uh, W zero one O, right, which connects Z zero to Y. And how do we compute that? Any thought? Let us just the uh, practice calculus, right? So we know that, okay, the loss is a function of uh, y, right? And y is a function of uh, z0, z1, z2, and those edge weights, right? So just apply the chain, right? So that basically means, okay, I can first take the partial derivative uh, with respect to y, right? Then multiply the partial derivative y with respect to w0, 0, 1, 0, 1, o, right? So let us look, take a look at, uh, uh, um, what is the partial derivative? What is the result for each partial derivative, right? So first, partial L or partial Y from this uh, square loss, we know it is just the Y minus Y star, right? And then how about partial Y or partial W zero one O? Just one, right? Okay. Look, Y equals to Y is just a linear combination of uh, neurons Z0, Z1, Z2, right? Remember, this is just uh, some uh, tradition in neural network literature, right? In the last layer, we're not gonna we're not gonna perform any nonlinear activation function. We just do a linear combination of the neurons from the second last layer, right? So <clears throat> then, from this relationship, we uh, can easily read 
partial y or partial w zero one o is one, right? So now we have a finished computation. Right? Any questions so far? Okay, so uh, let us uh, uh, do something a little bit um, more challenging, right? So now, if I want to compute partial L or partial W110, that is the edge weight uh, in the middle, right? Which connects Z1 in the hidden layer to hot Y in the output layer. How can we do that? Yes. The same thing, right? We're going to apply the chain rule, right? So which is partial L or partial Y? First and then times partial y over partial w one one o right. So obviously we know that from the calculation in the last step, we have already computed this uh, partial derivative, right? partial l, or partial y is already known. Right? There's no need to compute it again. So if you can catch it, you just read out the result, right? Which is y minus y star. Right? But how about uh, partial y over partial w one one o? What's that? What? What's partial L or partial uh, partial Y or partial W110? Just E1, right? Just remember, that's how we compute output in terms of uh, uh, Z0, Z1, Z2, right? just linear combination. And W110 is just the coefficient um, for Z1. Right? This is just E1. Right? So, Looks like uh, it's pretty uh, straightforward to compute the uh, partial derivative of the loss with respect to uh, all the edges here, right? So now let us uh, uh, move it, move it uh, backward. So what if I want to compute partial L over partial W2PH? <coughs> So W22H two two is on the edge that connects X2 in the input layer to Z2 from the hidden layer, right? Obviously, there's a more compositional uh, hierarchy than the weights we uh, just calculated. So let us take a look, right? We want to compute partial L or partial W22H. Two two but the idea is the same, right? We just want to apply the chain rule again. Right? So first, we can compute the partial L or partial Y because uh, L is directly computed um, from Y, right? From the output neuron. And then we uh, compute partial Y or partial W22H. How to compute this? What? Apply to what? Yeah, apply to the chain rule again, right? But it, when we apply the chain rule, we need to know the relationship between Y and W22H and also any intermediate results, right? So that's why we need to take a look, right? So first, we know that Y is immediately or directly computed from Z0, Z1, and Z2, right? So according to the chain rule, we're gonna first to compute partial y or partial w2 to h, we're gonna first compute partial y or partial z0 times partial z0 or partial w2 to h, plus partial y or partial z1 times partial z1 or partial w2 to h, plus partial y or partial z2 times partial z2 or partial w2 to h. So according to what we have discussed about dependency graph, right? Who can tell me uh, which which products are actually uh, useless or meaningless? Yes, hey, hey. So although I mean, if we if we don't know uh, rel the relationship between z zero, z one, z two, and the target weight w two to h, right? Of course, when we write down the chain rule, it should be like this, right? But from the your network structure, right? We actually know the dependency relationship, right? Actually, W22H has nothing to do with Z0 and Z1, right? 
That means that their partial derivative is simply zero, right? So actually we can just, uh, we can just throw out these two terms, right? And now our result will be, the left result will be just partial L over partial Y, right? And partial Y over partial Z2 and times partial Z2 over partial W2 to H, right? So now let, let us to, uh, take a look at uh, um, what is each of the uh, each of those uh, uh, each partial derivative, right? So first, partial L over partial Y we've already known it, which is Y minus Y star, right? And what about partial Y over partial Z two? What's this? Yeah, look at the rule we compute the upper neural, right? Yeah, which is a uh, W two one O, right? So then the remaining partial derivative is partial Z two over partial W two to H. Again, we need to know how do we compute Z two from the neurons from of the previous layer and and of an associate adjuvants, right? So here is just a little bit uh, complicated, right? So from Z two, we know that because Z two is a, a neuron in the hidden layer, right? So when we compute the value of neuron in the hidden layer, we're gonna first do a linear combination of the neurons of the previous layer, and then perform some activation function, right? So it is represented here, right? It is expressed here. So we're gonna first combine x0, x1, x2 with the associated uh, attributes, right? So remember, the edge weight on the edge that connect, connects x0 and z2 is denoted by w202 h, right? So this is um, w12h, and this w2 that's w22h. Right? That's how we compute the linear combination. And then we'll perform some activation function, and activation function, um, you have many, many choices, right? So now, if we want to compute the partial Z2 over partial W2 to H, again, we can apply the chain rule, right? So remember, this is just a, a composition function again. It's a composition of a activation function with a linear function, right? So we can wheel the input to this activation function sigma uh, denoted by S, right? Then partial Z2 over partial W2 to H is first, you're gonna compute the partial derivative of the activation with respect to its input, right? And then times partial S, which is linear function here, right? With respect to uh, W2 to H, right? So let us first look at this, this guy, right? What is partial S or partial W2 to H? It's just x2, right? It's just linear fun function, right? It's a linear combination of the neurons in the previous layers. And W22H is just one coefficient, right? So the partial derivative is simply x2. Right? Then the remaining term is just uh, the partial derivative of the uh, activation function, right? Which actually depends on your choice of activation function, right? If your choice of activation, activation function doesn't have a partial derivative, like value, right? This is called value. Right? Then you can use subgradient as we uh, previously discussed, right? And here we're gonna talk about uh, one uh, interesting case, right? If we uh, choose your activation as this, this function, which is called sigmoid function, right? how do we compute partial sigmoid over partial S? And okay. 
suppose this is your activation function, which is just a sigmoid function, right? So this, uh, this is um, a simple trick uh, for the sigmoid, right? So if we want to compute partial sigmoid or partial S, right? Uh, which is, this one is one plus e to the minus s to the power of minus one, right? You just apply the rule, right? Is minus one, you put the power in front of your expression and take the power of uh, the original power of minus, minus one, right? This again, right? If you just take a look uh, and, and then apply the chain rule, sorry, because you're gonna take the partial derivative of, of this guy, right? Which is simply e to the minus s and then apply the chain rule over minus s, which is simply min minus one, right? I use just the standard practice. Right? So minus one minus one is canceled. So you got e to the minus s over one plus e to the minus s and square, right? Okay, so if you stop here, you're gonna lose an important observation for this. Right? If you want to uh, a lot of tricks regarding the sigma activation function, you're gonna lose the chance. Right? So let us uh, just manipulate this this um, expression a little bit. Right? So we know that this guy essentially can be written as uh, e to the minus s over one plus e to the minus s times one over one plus e to the minus s, right? It's just a, you know, I just to expand. I just write a square term by the term multiply the term itself in a denominator, right? So what's this guy? It's just same more function itself, right? What about this guy? Yeah, I heard something, right? This is just a uh, one minus uh, C more, right? Why you can you can you can do this, right? One minus uh, C more S just just replace one in the numerator by e to the power of minus S, right? So now there's an interesting we arrive at an interesting result, right? The partial derivative of um, sigma with respect to this input is a uh, one minus sigma times sigma itself. Sigma function is always between zero and one, right? So that means uh, this gradient is always a uh, negative, right? So you can show that actually the sigma function is always a uh, monotonically increasing, right? You can also use that to prove the uh, other fancy stuff like uh, if it is convex and, and so on. Okay, now we can just substitute the results, right? We have just derived that the partial derivative of sigmoid is sigma times one minus sigmoid. And uh, <clears throat> and then you substitute it into partial Z2 or partial W2 to H, you got your result, right? And now since we have uh, we have already known partial L or partial Y and partial Y or partial Z2 and partial Z2 or partial W2 to H, you, we have uh, finished uh, the computation of partial L or partial W2 to H. Okay, any questions so far? Let's do this example. We actually um, have an idea, right? In the sense that, okay, how do we compute the partial derivative loss with respect to a neuron which is crossed the uh, upper layer and second last layer and which is crossed between the you know between the hidden uh, between the uh, between the hidden neurons right um, but, but how do we summarize a general rule right? do we have some some kind of uh, a, a general rule to summarize the competition procedure right why do we need a general general rule because we want to implement um, in an algorithm, I right? want to do it automatically rather than manually. Right? So going back to 
the dependency graph representation we previously discussed and emphasized, right? If we want to compute partial L over partial W2 to H, first L is a function of Y, right? So we can view that there's a virtual node, right? There's a virtual node, L here. L is a direct function of Y. That's why I can, I can create a node, right? And uh, and draw an edge from the output neural y to l, right? Because l is a function of y. And for this weight w two to h, right? Although or we can create a node for that, but it's not necessary because we know that it is only depends on z two, right? It doesn't depends on any other neurons. Z1 and Z0, their computation won't require W2 to H. Right? It only depends on its intermediate uh, parent, which we call parent or whatever, uh, associated node, right? Z2, right? So that means if you want to compute partial L or partial W2 to H, we can just uh, look at all the paths from its targeting node, Z2, all the way up to the node L, right? I remember when we talk about uh, the chain rule, right? In terms of dependency graph, we just look at the total, uh, how many passes do we have starting from the uh, source node to the target node, right? And here, W2 to H, of course, we want to compute this particularity, but because it immediately depends on Z2, right? Uh, so we can start from Z2 to look at paths, right? There won't be any paths, uh, any depend other dependency that W2 to H depends on a third variable. It's not, it's not like that, right? So you just need to look at, okay, starting from Z2, how many paths uh, will be connecting from Z2 to L, right? And in this case, just one path, right? Uh, which are marked uh, as uh, uh, yellow, right? And then we can just take a look along this path, along each edge, what is the partial derivative, right? So from L to Y, right, we have a partial L or partial Y, right? From Y to Z2, we got partial Y or partial Z2, right? And then eventually from Z2 to W2 to H, right? And you, you can imagine like there, there will be a virtual node for W2 to H as well, right? This will be partial Z2 or partial W2 to H, right? And then because there's only one pass, we just need to multiply <laughs> the partial derivatives along this pass and that's it. And this is how we get partial L over partial W2 to H. Does it make sense? Okay. Any questions so far? Everyone's comfortable, right? Uh, if you're if you're if you're a little a little bit hesitant about that, I highly re recommend you to do this manual stuff huh, like me because I've done this uh, so many times. I, I can can I can cover my eyes to do this. <laughs> so. <clears throat> Now we can distill a general rule, right? If we want to compute the partial derivative of the loss L with respect to any edge rate, right? this edge rate is denoted by WMNH. We know that it actually connects to, uh, connects from um, some hidden neuron, which are indexed by ZM, right? Um, pointing to some hidden neuron in the next layer denoted by Zn, right? Sorry. And this layer index is H, right? This is where WH and N uh, stays, right? If I want to compute the partial L over partial WMNH, right? So what, what we need to do is that, okay, I'm gonna, starting from uh, Zn, right? 
this is where the target node, the edge, WFN edge stays on points to, right? You just look at how many passes can connect ZN all the way up to the virtual loss node L, right? There might be quite a few, right? So uh, in, in this simple case, we'll only find one pass, right? But later we'll, we'll see that actually there, there could be um, uh, three or even four paths, right? But in general, what we do is that, okay, we're gonna draw all passes from uh, node N, ZN to the root, you know the root is Y and then power to the L, right? And then you just compute the partial derivative on each edge along each pass, right? And then multiply the partial derivatives along each pass and add them together. That's the general rule. Does it make sense? Right? So let us um, um, write it uh, uh, yeah, more formal way, right? So in general, if we want to compute partial L over any, let me use that part, edge weight, W, M, N, H, right? So <clears throat> yeah. So you're starting from the destination node, the edge WNH stays point to, right? pointing to, right? You just look for all the paths that connects to the root node Y, and we know that root node Y will be pointing to, this is a virtual node, right? Some uh, node loss, right? right? So let me just give some uh, uh, concrete example, right? So suppose you got uh, several paths, this one. And I also have this one. Let me draw a seemingly weird architecture. Okay. And let me denote, I'm just a random denote. It's just for convenience, right? Let me denote the intermediate, intermediate nodes by Z0, Z1, and Z2. Now, if I want to compute partial L or partial W, M, and H, right? as we said, right? Starting from Z and H, this is uh, the destination node. The edge, W, M, and H stays on pointing to, right? We just look at all the paths from Z and H to the root node or the output neuron of your neural network. Why? And then pointing to the virtual node, the loss, yeah, right? We know that, okay, we got three paths here, right? And then along each path, we know that, okay, um, that will be a product of the partial derivatives. So let us first write down the partial derivatives on each edge, right? So we know that on this edge, it will be partial L or partial Y. And this edge will be partial y or partial z zero. This edge will be partial y or partial z two. And this this edge will be partial z two or partial z n h. Right? And this edge will be partial z zero or partial z n h. And this will be partial z zero or partial z one. And this one will be partial z one or partial z n h. Right? I mean, on each edge, you just compute the immediate partial derivative, right? Partial destination node with respect to partial source node, right? So <clears throat> now let us just uh, enumerate every pass, right? Um, for the first pass, let us go this way, right? So we're gonna multiply all the partial derivatives along this path, right? Which will be partial L over partial Y times 
partial y over partial z zero right times partial z zero over partial z one times partial z one over partial z n h and then partial what Remember the yes, right. Remember, we're gonna have a we're gonna take the partial derivative with respect to W M N H, right? So you have to multiply partial Z and H over partial W M N H, right? So now you finish one pass, right? You just multiply um the partial derivatives along this pass, right? You're gonna do the same thing for the second pass, right? Let me mark the second pass by pink, right? So that will be this guy, right? So I'm gonna add the partial derivative, the product partial derivative along the second pass, which is partial L or partial Y times partial Y over partial Z zero times partial Z zero over second pass here, right? Partial Z N H times partial Z N H or partial W N N H, right? And tediously, we have to do the, the third pass, right? Third pass, um, we're gonna use some yellow one, okay? It's here. So, plus partial L, over partial y times partial y over partial z2 times partial z2 over partial z n h times partial z n h over partial w m n h. Then you'll finish the computation. Yeah, doing this is definitely inefficient. Yeah, because you have to um, backtrack all the passes all the way up to the root node, right? Uh, that's the worst case, right? Yeah. But let, let us uh, uh, start looking at this uh, simple naive approach and then seek for some uh, optimization, right? Okay. But as the rule sounds reasonable, right? It's a mechanic, it's a stupid. Right, but it's a uh, correct. Okay, so now yeah, you can see that actually the partial derivatives along the three passes actually share many common terms, right? Right. So uh you see that why do we need to Recompute each partial derivative again. And why not? We just, uh, for example, all every pass share the same, um, at least the last term they share, right? Same last term. So we can uh, take them, take it out, right? Okay. So let us uh, just put this uh, uh, in our mind, right? We want to do uh, a little bit more complex example to motivate some kind of uh, more efficient strategy of doing this, right? So obviously, as someone has pointed out, right? If you just keep, every time you, you, you're going down to um, a layer, right? In the bottom, and uh, then you just trace back all the all the paths way, way up to the root node and then to the uh, lost node, right? It sounds uh, very, very inefficient, right? And let us uh, uh, see, what kind of common structure can we extract from just doing this summation over the product over each pass, right? So that's why we're gonna um, look at a moderately uh, complex example. Right? So we're gonna use a three layer neural network. Why? We're gonna assume three nodes. Hmm. 
each hidden layer. So, similarly, each neuron connects to every neuron in a next layer. So this is a zero, layer zero, layer one, layer two, and layer three. Right? And this is a x zero, x one, x two. And here uh, we uh, we just omit the constant feature right? just for convenience. Um, so this one would be z zero one, z one one, and z uh two one so the subscript uh represents the index of the neuron in that layer and the superscript index the uh, index the layer itself right that's why the first node here we denoted by z01 right and second node or second neuron z11 third node z21 right? similarly this is uh denoted by z02 z12 z two two right and of course we got a loss function l right l uh we can draw a virtual node yeah and uh, for results result loss of generality we can just assume okay loss is just a uh, you know a square loss right so now suppose uh we want to use the rule we have just summarized right, to compute the partial derivative of a loss with respect to each, this edge. Right? Just, you, know, you, you can see that it's at the very bottom of the network, right? So this edge weight is denoted by W111, right? Remember the superscript index, the layer of the parking node, right? And uh, one means starting from x1, other one means pointing to z11. So if we want to compute partial L over partial W111, following the rule we have just discussed, what shall we do? What shall we do? Yeah, look at the path from which to which. To the Z11, right? Yeah, because Z11 is the target node. The edge associated with W111 points to, right? So just look at Starting from Z11, how many passes do we have to connect into the output neuron Y and then L? How many? Three, right? Okay. Let me just uh, mark them, right? We have three paths, right? Second pass. And third pass is uh, going through the right, right? Okay. So let's just apply the rule we have discussed, right? This is equal to, first we're gonna multiply the partial derivative along the green path, right? Which we just, this is pretty mechanically, right? Partial L over partial Y, right? And partial Y over partial Z02, right? Then partial Z, 
0, 2 over partial z, 1, 1, then times partial z, 1, 1 over partial w, 1, 1, 1, right? We'll finish one pass, right? And this uh, yet to be done, right? And we can we need to enumerate the second pass, right? The pink one, right? Partial L or partial Y, right? What's the next? Partial Y or partial Z, one, two, right? And third one is partial Z, one, two, or partial Z, one, one. The last one is still partial Z, one, one, or partial W, one, one, one. A third path. The right path, right? So partial L or partial Y. What is the second derivative? Yeah. Partial Y or partial Z two two, right? Times partial Z two two or partial Z one one. And eventually partial z one one over partial w one 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 right does it make sense i mean it's easy but it's just a little bit tedious right so now let us look at is there any way to uh, simplify this result right so know that along each path right at least the last term is always a uh, partial z one one over partial w one 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 This term, this term, this term, they are the same, right? So why not we first uh, apply the association rule, right? We just take it out, right? So that means um, I can just uh, move them out, right? I can just uh, add the remaining product together, right? then multiply with partial z one or partial w one one one, right? So now I want to ask, what can you observe about this big term inside the parentheses? What's that? What? Yeah, it's a double product. Uh, but other than that, can be represented as another partial derivative. Yeah, you're thinking about the right direction, but I want some direct answer. So what's the what's this whole big parenthesis represents? What does this big whole parenthesis represent? What is actually what actually it is? Yes, exactly right. Okay. So even following the chain rule, dependency graph rule, we have also can observe that, okay, this guy, this big parenthesis essentially is a nothing but partial L or partial E11, right? So if we take into this observation, then the partial derivative With respect to W one one one, has a very concise form, right? It's just partial L over partial of its parent or target node, right? Which is Z one one, right? Times partial Z one one, which is parent node, with respect to weight, right? And then now let us consider another edge weight which also on edge pointing to Z1. See, this edge weight, which is denoted by W211, right? 
what is partial L over partial W211? And this edge weight is on the edge also pointing to Z11. It's here. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? So look at, we have already had this uh, nice successive structure, right? So that means if we just change it to another uh, edge weight, as long as they point to the same, target node, right? So, so we're gonna still have partial L or partial Z11. And now we have to compute the partial Z11 or partial W211, right? The only difference is here, right? So now actually it brings a, a completely different way, right? If you can instead compute and catch the partial duty of the loss with respect to the parent node or the target neuron, right? Then the computation, the further computation with respect to the associated edge weights are straightforward, right? Just read out the partial duty with respect to its parent node, then multiply the partial duty of the parent node with respect to weight, right? And of course, this will change this will vary along different ways, right? But if you can efficiently compute this, I mean, the partial duty of, of a loss with respect to the neurons, uh, you can save a large amount of computation, right? Remember, this large amount of computation is encoded in this big parenthesis. So this is a key idea of that computation. So what's the back propagation? Back propagation means that I'm gonna start from the output neuron and calculate from top to the bottom. Every time I'm gonna leverage my partial duty of the loss with respect to the neurons in the layer, in the next layer to compute the partial derivative uh, with respect to the neuron in the current layer. And then with the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the neurons in the current layer, I then calculate the partial derivative with respect to the edge weights associated with each neuron in the current layer. Okay. So that's the idea. Does it make sense? Okay. And and here there's a, a dynamic view of the loss function if you want to leverage this, right? So from this layer, you can view L is a function of what, right? And from this layer, you can view L as function of a Z0, 2, Z1, 2, and Z2, 2, right? You can collapse the neurons from the top to the current layer. Then we will compute partial L, say, over partial Z02. Because I have this collapse view of L function, which is function of Z02, Z12, Z22, I will apply the chain rule. You can first retrieve partial L or partial Z02, then times partial Z02 over partial Z01, right? Plus, partial L over partial Z, one, two. Remember the second input, right? Times partial Z, one, two, or partial Z, zero, zero, one. Plus partial L or partial Z, two, two, times partial Z, two, two, or partial Z, zero, one. Okay. As long as you take this collapsed view, you can always leverage the results you have computed and, and catch in a previous step, which are the partial duty with respect to neurons in the next layer, right? and use that to highly efficient compute partial duty of the loss with respect to the current neurons. Once you have that partial derivatives, you can then 
you know, just multiply the partial of the neuron with respect to weights. Yes, you have to memorize every step. Yeah, of course, it's still like a memory uh, intensive, but it's much, much more efficient because you never need to trace back the whole past all the way around to the bottom, uh, to, the, to the top. Any questions so far? Does this overall view make sense before we proceed to the concrete example? Okay, then let us uh, practice a concrete example. Right. We're gonna still use this example. So that means I have to redraw, I have to redraw this figure. Or maybe I can, yeah, maybe it, uh, yeah, I just need to use a new, yeah. So let me redraw this, um, so. This is layer zero, layer one, layer two, layer three, it's upper Y, and it virtually connect to some loss node L. Okay. So this is X zero, X one, X two, Z zero one, Z one one, Z two one, Z zero two, Z one two, and Z two two, right? Okay, so back propagation starts from the top, from output. That's why it's called back propagation because you start from output and all the way back to the input, input layer. Right? So that means in the first step, we're gonna look at the output, the output layer, right? and we're gonna we're gonna the, the goal of each step is to compute the partial duty of the loss with respect to every neuron in the current layer and the partial duty of the loss with respect to every edge weight associated with the neurons in the layer. Right? So, that, so that means we want to compute partial L or partial Y. Right? There's only one neuron in the upper layer. Right? And how they associate edge weights are here, right? So here is W two one two or three sorry this W uh, one one three and W two one three right so on the three edges here right so that means we want to compute partial L or partial W zero one three partial L over partial W one one three partial L over partial W two one three right. This is our first step, and the first step is uh I mean it's pretty straightforward partial L over partial Y because L is an immediate function Y. Right? So if it is a square loss, so partial L over partial Y will be Y minus Y star right. This is something I have already shown right, and then partial Y, partial L, or any partial edge weight, associated edge weight, say W013, is relatively simple, right? But also a base, what do we have uh, discussed, right? So we're gonna first look at partial L or partial parent node, which is partial L or partial Y, right? Then look at partial Y or partial W013, right? So this one is catch, you can just read it out, right? And this one is depends on how you compute Y in terms of those edge weights, right? So we know that y equals to w zero one three times uh, z zero two plus w one one three times uh, z one two uh, plus w um, 
two one three times z two two a. So you know that partial y or partial w zero one three will simply be z two z zero two right? Is actually the neuron which uh, source node right on its associated edge. Then you just take it off, and you can compute every partial derivative with respect to those edge widths, right? So we'll finish that uh, step one. Any question? I'm just trying to illustrate the whole procedure, right? Um, so now for step two, we're gonna move a layer, one layer toward the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Z0 is a node or neuron. Z02. Yeah. So associated edge means as long as there's an edge pointing to that neuron, right? The edge rates will be associated with that neuron. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So the step two that okay, we're gonna move uh, one layer below, okay? So we're gonna move to uh, layer two. The goal is the same. We want to leverage the computational results we have just finished to efficiently compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to all the neurons in current layer, layer two, and with respect to all the edge weights associated with those neurons. And that means uh, the weights on those edges which point into Z0, Z0, Z1, Z2, right? So our target is to compute partial L or partial Z0, partial L or partial Z1, partial L or partial Z2, right? And also, the associate address, right? W um, two IJ. Well, IJ is beyond to zero one two one. Right? Right. It's just the numerator of um, address on edges pointing to the three neurons in layer two, right? There are many. So. Then let us look at how do we first look at how do we compute the partial derivative with respect to each neuron, right? So if we take a look at the partial L or partial Z02, right? How should we compute that? Remember the collapsed wheel, right? So here, we're gonna still view at the layer two, right? We're gonna view the loss function as a function of the neurons in the next layer. You mean output layer, so they still function of Y, right? So then apply the chain rule. It'll be partial L over partial Y times partial Y or partial z, zero two, right? And again, partial L or partial Y has already computed and cached in the previous step. So you don't need to compute again, right? And similarly, partial L over partial z one two, right? The second mode, right? How do we compute that? Yeah, remember, you're gonna view the L is a function of the neurons in a next layer, right? Which is just a, a function of Y, right? So apply the chain rule, it will be partial L over partial Y times partial Y over partial Z, one, two, right? And similarly, partial L over partial 
z zero. Uh, sorry, z zero two. Uh, uh, z um, partial z two two right. Is partial L or partial Y, right? So here, in this way, we'll, we'll L is L function, function Y, right? Times partial Y over partial Z22, right? And we can see that they share partial L or partial Y, right? This has already been computed in the cache, right? They don't need to recompute it, right? The only difference is that, okay, you, you're gonna have to Compute partial y or partial z02, partial y or partial z12, partial y or partial z22, right? And we know that this is, uh, is obtained by the relationship between y and those neurons, right? It's a linear relationship, it's uh, just straightforward compute, but they're different. Right? They're different for different neurons. So that means uh, they are the only brand new thing you need to compute, right? And you multiply with the existing result, you get the partial duty, right? So once we have uh, obtained the partial duty with respect to every neuron in layer two, then we can use this result to compute the partial duty of a loss with respect to every associate address, right? So I just pick up, random pick up one address, say, uh, this address, which is denoted by W212, right? So how do we compute partial L over partial W212? Anyone tell me? Yes. Two one two, right? So it's a partial L or partial Z one two times partial Z one two over partial W two one two, right? It's just look at the target node that edge points to two, right? You just read out the result just computed, right? Partial L or partial that node. Then multiply the partial that node with respect to W two one two, right? And that's it, right? And another example. Is this symbol too small? Okay, yeah. And so I don't know how to, is it better? Oh, okay. So uh, take another example, right? Say if I want to compute this guy, right? Edge rate on this guy will be W one, zero two right if you want to compute partial l over partial w one zero two right again we're going to first read out the partial duty with respect to the parent node right target node which is partial l over partial w uh, partial z zero two right and then you just calculate partial z zero two over partial W one zero two, right? And this guy, we have already computed. We have already know how to compute that, right? Remember, it's just a, a linear combination to, and then composite with the activation function, right? Just apply the chain rule we have just discussed, right? So now, through step two, we can compute the partial derivative of all the of the loss with respect to all the neurons, and also with respect to the with respect to all the address, right? So suppose we have finished the uh, step two, right? Next, we're gonna move to a uh, step three, right? The goal, what is the goal in step three? The goal is the same. Compute the partial derivative of a loss with respect to every neuron in layer one, right? Which is partial Z, zero one, partial L, 
over partial z zero two. Oh, sorry. Oops. Partial z one one, partial l over partial z two one, right? And also, all the associate edge weights. That means the edge weights on those edges, right? On the edges pointing to z zero one, z one one, z two one, right? Will be partial w one i j and i j belong to zero one two, right? Again, we need to first leverage the results in layer two to compute the partial derivative for every neuron in layer one, right? So let's just take a look right here. So suppose I want to compute partial L over partial V11. How can I do that? Remember, when we move to layer one, we're gonna view, again, take the collapse view, right? We're gonna view the loss function as the function, as a function of the neurons in the next layer. That means the neurons in the layer two, right? Which is Z zero two, Z one two, and Z two two, right? And then according to this, we're gonna compute partial L over partial Z11, right? How, how can we do that? Apply the chain rule, right? Which is partial L, remember, partial L over partial Z02, right? The first input, right? Times partial Z02 over partial Z11 plus partial L over partial Z one, two, right? Second input, right? Times partial Z one, two over partial Z one, one plus partial L over the third input, partial Z two, two times partial Z two, two over partial Z one, one, right? So from computation in the previous step, we know that this guy, this guy, this guy have already computed, right? That is here, right? So we just need to read all those results. And the only thing which is new is to compute the partial duty of each parent node of Z11, right? Which are Z02, Z12, and Z22 with respect to Z11, partial Z11 itself, right? This is a brand, this is something brand new you have to compute, right? And then you just plug in and compute. And the same rule applies to every other rule in layer one. Okay. Once you have it computed, and then you can use those results to compute the partial duty of lo loss with respect to every attribute. Okay, let's uh, uh, stop here today. So on Thursday, we're gonna go through this example again, because uh, this is very, very important for you. All you understand, only we understand this uh, procedure, you are able to implement the backpropagation by itself. Okay, see you on Thursday.